Attending a Teams meeting can happen a number of ways. For example, you could start out on your calendar node in Teams, find the meeting that's happening or about to happen, and notice before you even click on anything, there's a Join button immediately. I could click on that. Or, as I've already done, you can click on the event itself and then click Join. Especially like if it's not going to happen for a little bit and maybe you just want to join early, you can always just click on another item and choose the Join button. So since this one's already about to happen or happening, I can click on Join right on the event itself. It's going to ask to connect to my computer audio and my camera if I have one connected. And for this demo, I don't have a camera, so you, you don't see a preview here, but if you did, you would see one there. And we choose our audio, maybe you have multiple microphones, you can choose the correct one here. And then I click on Join Now. Now since I'm the first one here, it just says waiting for others to join. Um, you might see your video feed here if you are using a webcam. But let's say you're the organizer of this meeting. Uh, as the organizer, you may have some extra work to do before the meeting begins, such as maybe opening up the chat panel and putting some notes in here, like links to resources or reminders about how to do something in this particular meeting or where to find something. Uh, you might want to watch the participant panel to see who else is in this meeting with you, or maybe people who you could request to join you with one click. And I'll send them an online call. All right, you could share the invite if somebody's not showing up who should be here and they're not down below in the suggestion area. You can always search for someone. And we can also lock meetings. Once we do get everybody in the meeting from the participant panel, click that ellipsis, choose lock meeting, and then make sure that if the meeting invite is forwarded after the fact or somebody's too late to the meeting, that they'll be locked out until it's finished. So it's a, it's a nice way to limit attendance a little bit when you need to. So another thing as an organizer that you might want to do specifically is use breakout rooms. And that's the two square icon. And basically you choose how many rooms you want and whether part participants should be divided automatically or if you want to choose which rooms they go into. And then simply create the rooms. And basically these breakout rooms are kind of like mini meetings within this larger meeting. And so when you open these rooms later in the meeting, uh, basically it opens a separate window for the participants of that room and they have a meeting and you can put a timer on it uh, by using the settings here. Put a timer, say maybe five minutes before they get brought back to the main meeting. Um, you can choose whether or not people can leave the room early, that kind of thing. But it's a great way to have, you know, more focused discussions in smaller groups and then bring back more refined ideas to the larger group. It's also a way to do like little mini conferences inside your company where you might want to rename these rooms to specific topics or focused areas so that people can uh, you know, go into rooms of interest or you can put them into rooms of interest. Um, and you might have facilitators in each of those sessions to kind of lead those trainings. Now this meeting is about over already. So you notice I get the five minutes left in the scheduled meeting time reminder, just a nice way to respect everybody's time in this meeting. So maybe I'm wrapping up at this point. And when the meeting is over, I can either leave, which just takes me out of the meeting, or since I'm the organizer, I can drop that down and end the meeting for everybody, which kicks out all the attendees. But before we go, let's just look at a couple more features. I can use the More Actions menu to do a number of things, including recording the meeting, turning on live captions so I can see who is speaking and what they're saying in case my volume uh, isn't working or if I uh, have a hearing impairment perhaps. And then I can go into Together Mode, Large Gallery, all kinds of different things here. And if you're having any kind of um, device issues, let's say your, your camera is on the wrong camera, like a back-facing camera instead of front-facing, you could go to your device settings and change some of those here as well. And you may also want to share content during the meeting. So if you're not simply just attending, you might want to share a video. And if you do share videos, just be sure to turn on your computer sound so that they can hear the direct audio and not just uh, what they can hear through your microphone. And then you also have to choose when you're sharing content. Do you want to share your entire screen showing all windows? So for example, right now they would see this Teams meeting and my Teams calendar back there. Um, or you can choose just one window. If I want to keep looking at the meeting screen but share a document that I have open, I might choose just the one window, which would be that specific document perhaps. And then down below we've got a few more options. I can uh, go to PowerPoint Live, which allows my attendees a more interactive experience with my slide decks. Uh, also allows for a rapid translation of an entire slide deck for people, which is a nice feature and high contrast for better visibility. But just a number of options here, and multiple people can share during a meeting. Just be mindful that if you start sharing content when someone else already is, it's going to kick them out of sharing and you'll take over. 
All right, so we're all finished up with this meeting, so I am going to use my leave drop down and end the meeting for everybody. And if I'm recording, uh, it also stops the recording. So we'll end the meeting, click end. And then afterwards, since the meeting is now over, I'd want to go into that meeting to maybe pull an attendance report. And you can do that a number of ways. I could go over to my chat panel and find any chat that took place during that meeting, and then I'd find the attendance report there as the organizer. But otherwise, you can find the attendance report by just opening up the details of that event and then downloading the attendance report from the details pane. Now, I mentioned there's a few ways to join the meeting. We did it directly from our team's calendar, but you could also do that from Outlook. If you just go in, find that specific instance that you want to join, and then click on the click here to join the meeting. So it's a few more steps, not as convenient as if you went straight from Teams, but it's an option, right? And that would do the same thing where it launches the team join dialog. You set up your devices and join. All right, and then just one more idea here in case your team is using a channel calendar. Notice you can go there and do the same thing as you could from the calendar tab. Let's find the event, click on join. Now we talked a lot from the organizer's perspective where you can get the attendance report, do the breakout rooms, end the meeting for everybody. There's just a couple more things that just attendees could do that you might be interested in. So we'll open up that meeting and click on join one more time. Let's pretend we're an attendee this time. And as somebody's presenting, I might be using the chat panel over here to communicate with everyone else and say, hi all. And then other people can come here and react just as if it's a chat message or a channel conversation. Right, and I can still send GIFs, I can still send stickers, file attachments, all kinds of things. Um, just be mindful that different meeting organizers may restrict certain features, more or less, just depending on the purpose of the meeting. But in this specific scenario, it's, it's just an ordinary kind of chat experience. Okay, I may also, instead of using chat, want to use reactions. So up next to the chat panel, notice there's an emoji with a hand. If I click on the raise hand icon, it's going to show the, uh, the meeting leader that my hand is up by showing a hand icon and it highlights my image in gold or my camera feed in gold. Okay, and, and instead of just doing a permanent uh, raise hand, lower hand feature like that button, these other reactions are temporary. Where if I clap my hands, it shows as a temporary hand clap for everybody in the meeting. Uh, or a temporary laugh or a temporary heart or something. So they would see that pop up on the screen just for a moment, but then it goes away. So I can engage just visually through the meeting without necessarily having to have my camera on or using chat uh, too much. And then also as an attendee, I might use some of the same options we looked at just a little bit ago, including turning on live captions so I could uh, better follow along what's happening and just have another way to make sure I'm hearing and seeing everything correctly as we go through. Helps me stay focused a little bit. Okay, and speaking of focus, as people are chatting, if the bubbles that pop up are distracting to you, because those do pop up right up at the top of the meeting, you could turn those off. So that'll help you focus on the content more. Or if you're taking screenshots, that would help with that as well. Okay, and if you as an attendee are done with the meeting early, let's say you have to leave early for another meeting, um, you can always just leave the meeting by using the upper right hand corner uh, button and that's going to take you out, but everybody else will continue to meet until they leave or until the organizer uses that drop down and ends the meeting. All right, so we'll go ahead and leave. All right, and we'll close those details there. And let's check out that meeting chat feed. It should be in our monthly reports channel where that meeting was scheduled. And then if I look down here, if I expand the chat, I can see my hi all message and I can see the attendance report from the last time that meeting ran. So since that is a recurring meeting, I'll get multiple attendance reports as the organizer and I'll see all meeting chats combined in one place. So nice way to just kind of compartmentalize everything. And uh, since that was a channel meeting, of course it's in a channel conversation, but if you just have a one-off meeting, you and one other person or a chat meeting or something, then that attendance report and of course all the meeting chat would show up in your chat. So that's pretty much attending a meeting. Uh, next we're going to talk about your personal settings more, your out of office, your availability, those kind of things.